Hey drivers, today I'm going to talk about how you can get faster on track. This is the second in my series on how to track, so I recommend you check out the first one after this one, link in the description. Quick disclaimer before we get started, I am by no means a professional driver. At the time of recording, I've done a total of 8 track days and a few autocross events. I've also done the SoCal TRD series where I took 3rd place in the season and 1st in one of the events. But if you're more of an advanced driver or even an experienced intermediate driver, this might not be that helpful. That said, we're going to go over some driving fundamentals that everyone needs to know. Even the most inexperienced new driver should know these things before they even think about getting on track. So I feel I'm qualified to talk about them. A lot of the stuff is things that I just assumed people knew, but after tracking this last year and talking to friends, I realized that some of this is not as common knowledge as I thought it was. So with that out of the way, let's jump into five things to make you faster on track. Number one, straighten out the course. So obviously all tracks have turns unless you're talking about drag racing, but you want to minimize that. The fundamental principle here is the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. So if you imagine a gentle S-curve, taking this path would be quicker than if you strictly followed the curve of the turns. The other reason this is faster is because you can keep up your speed more when going straight than you can when going around turns. So the common thing you'll hear people say is use the whole width of the track or you paid for the whole track, use the whole track. The exact line will depend on the track and what car you're driving, but generally you want to enter from the far outside of the turn, clip the apex on the inside, and then exit again to the outside of the turn. Basically all of these things are in some way about maximizing grip and keeping your maximum and minimum speeds up as high as possible. Number two, slow in, fast out. Initially this might sound odd to newer drivers, why would you want to do anything slow if you're racing? Well, it doesn't mean you're actually going slow, but you don't want to overdrive the car. So it's about maximizing grip going into the turn, through the turn, and then exiting the turn. If you go too fast into a turn, you may be faster in that moment, but you'll have negative consequences for much longer after that. If you miss the braking point, you're going to go wide on the turn and take a slower path around it. Even if you do manage to make it around the turn on a relatively good line, if you're fighting the car through the whole turn, you're going to have less grip exiting, have to get on throttle later, and be slower going down the straight, which can have a huge impact on your overall lap times. Number three, smooth is fast. Okay, this one was drilled into me from playing racing games long before I even had a driver's license. I mentioned maximizing grip earlier, and it applies here too. So basically, anytime you're doing anything other than keeping the steering wheel straight, the throttle pinned to the floor, you're losing speed. Now obviously if you're going around a road course, this is impossible, but it's important to understand this. Essentially, the fewer inputs you make, the faster you'll be. So if you have to make a steering angle adjustment mid-turn, you scrubbed off speed. If you lock up braking, you scrub speed. If you spin the tires exiting the corner, you scrub speed. You can be smoother by being aware of weight shift. Remember, your car has inertia. So if you're traveling slowly and you accelerate hard, the weight will shift backward over the rear wheels. When you brake or lift off, the weight will shift forward. Or when you turn, the car will lean to the outside. Managing this weight shift is key to maximizing grip and getting faster lap times. So be smooth and intentional with your inputs. Number four, look far ahead and in the direction you want to go. This is the one that I personally need to work on the most. Basically, the direction your head is turned is where your hands will tend to follow. So look out where you want to be, not where you are right now, or at what you're trying to avoid. Look far ahead and through the turn. This will also help you be more prepared for what's coming up next rather than reacting to it in the moment that it arrives. Number five, heel toe or rev matching. Unfortunately, this last one won't apply to everyone because more and more cars are either auto, DCT, or even if they are stick, they rev match for you in cars like the 370Z and Type R. That said, a lot of people track cars like the Miata, MR2, or GT86, and basically any older car will need to be rev matched on downshifts. I'm not going to go into the actual technique of heel toe in this video, but if you're not doing it, you're doing it wrong. Seriously, if whoever taught you how to drive stick didn't tell you how to rev match, they just skipped a lesson. If you don't know how to rev match, you don't know how to drive stick. It would be like learning how to type, but you don't know what the shift key does. It would be like taking sex ed, but they didn't tell you about the clip. The point is, if you're not doing it, you're wasting your time. I was shocked to find out how many people are actually on track not doing this. It's a basic driving skill for stick shift cars. Basically, when the clutch is in, you need to blip the throttle to get the tack up to the RPMs that the engine will be at when the clutch is engaged with the lower gear. This ensures a smooth shift. If you don't, you'll get a sudden unintended weight shift and potentially even lock up the rear wheels. This will wreak havoc on your lap times. It'll also put way more wear on your clutch, your transmission, your axles, etc. 
Now for two quick bonus tips. Look in your mirrors for people who are faster than you. Don't get so focused on what you're doing that you're constantly in the way of other drivers or potentially even causing an accident. And don't be afraid to spin out. Ease into things and don't suddenly go way faster than you did before, but if you don't go over the limit, you won't know where that is and you'll have a hard time getting faster. If you have the proper safety equipment and you're not in a situation with barriers all around you, there's really no reason to fear losing the car. I hope you found these things helpful or at least interesting. If you did, I'd appreciate you hitting that like button and subscribing so more people can see the video. Let me know what tips you have for going faster. You can help other people in the comments, and I'm a noob too, so the more information I can learn, the better. Remember, the real challenge is putting these things into practice, but you need to know what you're at least trying to do. Thanks for watching.